Start with Tim Bontemps. Uh, two things quick, Brad. First, do you have an update on uh, Jalen and Jason yet in terms of what their availability is? Um, both likely available. And then I think you said before the game Friday, might have been after, that the you, you've seen some encouraging signs in terms of progress over the past few games. I was curious what specifically you've seen beyond just getting a few wins that you've liked and how can you kind of translate that into some success on this road trip? Well, this is a really hard road trip, obviously. We're playing really good teams. Um, nobody's hotter than Denver right now. But, you know, I'm looking at it more objectively of how we respond in the middle of games, um, you know, the way that we've stayed with it. Um, those types of things have been better as of late. And, you know, I think that, you know, um, we're not perfect. We have, some, we have some things that we have to manage. We've talked about that all year. And... Um, hopefully we're getting a little bit better at that. I just think when you have uh, Tristan's presence back has really helped. Um, you know, I think because then you've got, you know, Rob can, can play, um, you know, as many minutes as he can and Tristan can fill in the rest. And, um, you know, I thought that that was a really, his, his presence in the New York game and the other night, the physicality um, made a difference for us. And then, you know, I think that guys are, um, you know, conscious of things we haven't done well and focused on doing them better. Mark Medina. Brad, good to see you. Um, I was wondering, how would you size up Nicole Yoke and what he's done this season compared to some of the other uh, MVP candidates? Well, I don't, I don't really, you know, get into comparing them. Um, but I would say that he is one of the most unique uh, players I've ever coached against. His uh, size, his passing, his vision. Um, he basically doubles as their center and point guard, depending on what they want to do. Their uniqueness of their actions is that a lot of their actions are inverted. You know, I think, you know, you've got Jokic with the ball and you've got Murray setting screens. You've got Jokic coming off a pin down. You've got Murray setting the down screen. You know, they're doing some of that stuff with Gordon as well, with, you know, Murray setting back screens for Gordon and then him picking on, you know, the opponent if they switch it. Murray slipping it if they don't with Jokic as a ball handler. Like, it's such a, it's such a weapon to have Jokic and, and his decision-making at the five. Um, and they utilize it terrifically. Like they really have a w good, good way about them. Um, and you know, he's the hub of it all. Gary Washburn. Hey Brad, two questions on late game situations. One in the Knicks game where they had, you guys had the run out and Jalen gave, sorry, it was the Minnesota game where Jalen gave to Jason for the dunk. It was like 17.3 left. Would you have rather Jason kind of hold the ball until someone comes and maybe score then it's a very strange situation yeah. but it was it was it was 17 seconds left still and no, second, take the bat take the basket there take I mean, the 17 basket. seconds take 17 seconds left a ton of time they still had at least one timeout maybe two like no you take the basket there you if you dribble around they're going to come trapped you know you don't have everybody down the floor you know if you don't have three outlets on the trap. You got a likelihood of throwing it away. You still have to make both free throws. You're eventually, you, they're going to have time to come down and get a three off and tie the game anyways, even if you dribble it out. So you take the basket there. And then uh, did you ever, did you consider fouling? Uh, yeah, too much the last time left. One. They had one time out left. So it was too much time in the way that we do the foul scenarios. If you, if they didn't have a timeout left, Gary, Maybe maybe at around that time, but with eight or nine with a timeout left, they still have a chance to advance. You still have to get the ball in. There's all kinds of issues with that. Leonardo Torres. Coach, it's Leonardo Torres from Peru. Hope you're well. Coach, how do you slow down an MVP candidate like Nikola Djokic? And what are your thoughts on Facundo Campas? Well, I think, uh, first of all, um, to answer the latter, I think he's really good um, and really fun to watch and has always been fun to watch. You know, I've been watching him on the international stage for a long time. Um, 
And then as far as slowing down Jokic, I mean, it's easier said than done. He, he scored at will on us in the last game, but I think you have to balance how much he's getting others involved and how much you're reacting to his challenge shots and challenge post-ups that he's making. He's a, he's a really difficult guy to guard because if you put two on the ball, both, you know, if he sets a pick and roll and you put two on the ball and he gets it and he's playing four on three, he kills you. If you put two on the ball in the post, um, he slices you up with passing. And he's so big and strong. I think his, to me, the step that he's made towards being an MVP candidate is that he punishes you by scoring the ball. You know, he didn't always do that, in, at least in the couple of times we see him a year. I felt like he, he desired to pass so much more than to score. And now he just takes whatever the defense gives him, in my opinion, and he just scores it at will on guys. Final question, Jared Weiss. Mentioning how you guys calculate play out the foul scenarios, do you consider recent events and how they played out in factoring those decisions, or do you just strictly stick to the data? No, it's all – data is such a small part of it. It just gives you a guideline if you use it, but you have to fit, you have to consider everything. You have to consider who's in there to rebound. You have to consider how well you can guard the perimeter. I mean, I thought we guarded the, the shot that Russell shot really well. And we still had nine seconds left to come down and get a shot off ourselves. So like there are all kinds of factors that you have to consider. Time is certainly a huge factor. Timeouts left by the opponent are a huge factor, but so is offensive rebounding. When was the last time you saw a foul called on an offensive rebound attempt? Like it's hard to get a rebound when everybody's going the way they go. And so like you got to make sure that you consider and factor in everything. All right, wrap it up right there. Thanks, Coach.